name Ashley Spearman. I am the director of our student transitions office here on campus. Uh, did everybody go through, what is it called, orientation, welcome, that type of thing? That's what my office does. Uh, are you guys in AP 1000? Not anymore. Not anymore? Did you pass it? Yeah. Just say yes. Just say yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm over that. So that wonderful course that you had to take was because of uh, me and my department. So that's kind of what my office does. We also do special projects. Uh, we have a text line for our office, uh, which is 292-4689-292-GOV, with a Z, uh, where you can ask all kind of questions, um, just anything related to the institution, and we'll probably answer you right away unless it's after five. Um, but that's also another special project that we do. And also, sometimes I do workshops, hints like this one, um, about college success, how to be successful within your first year of college, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this is very interactive. Unfortunately, it's only a few of you, so we'll see. You're gonna, I'm going to pick on you guys. Um, how interactive you can be. But uh, workshop, it's the same way as how I do my AP 1000 classes that I teach. Um, it's kind of discussion-based. So I really want to get your guys' feedback. We only know what freshmen or new students, not even typically freshmen, need unless you guys tell us what you need. So that's one reason why we like to be interactive, just to kind of know what's going on and what works, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so first thing, student transitions office. Kind of like um, what we do is, is a wide range of different things, but essentially, uh, like I said, we cover the welcomes that we have. So at the welcome, you have advising and registration, and then you have orientation weekend um, and so during orientation weekend we have like just a lot of events basically for students so we want you to be connected be engaged get to know the campus etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, when you had AP 1000 you had to read a textbook or novel uh, what book was it that you guys had to read last night? Westmore. Westmore. Did you guys like the Westmore? You had to see him speak? Have you ever met an author before? Is that your first time being an author of a book? Now, do you remember? You probably didn't do that stuff in India huh? Oh, okay. Well, you're you might have, you don't know. Uh, so, the author of the book, that's a committee that decide, the university decides to attach it to AP 1000, so that's why it's a required read. Uh, we had also uh, introduced blocks or bundles. Not everybody necessarily was in a block or a bundle. Uh, what that is, is you have one course that's connected to two or three other courses. Statistics show that if you are have smaller class sizes and connected with students, you statistically do better. So we had about a 0.5 GPA difference between our students who were in a block or a bundle and students who were not. So it wasn't a significant difference as far as GPA. What we did find is it was a significant difference for students who uh, registered for the next semester uh, and students who failed, students that were in a block failed less classes, uh, about 15%. So that's a huge percentage of students. Um, who actually did better overall. We can't really say 100% if it was because they were in a block, if they were connected, but we're hoping that they had more connectedness, they studied together, they actually went to class, or if they did miss class, they have more students that were in the same classes with them, so that's why they did a little bit better. Um, and then also, we assist you with finding advising. That's actually what your major is. Um, it's not directly in my office, but we get you set up um, each semester with finding out, figuring out who your advisor is, if you don't know who your advisor is, or if you decide to change your major. So that's kind of in a nutshell what our office does. So you about our text line, 292 govs with the Z. Uh, it's just general texting questions. It also comes to my cell phone, so please don't bother me at one o'clock in the morning about stuff for the university. But I will answer you. Uh, like all these snow days or delay times, I was blowing up with the text line, but I answered all the questions. So if you ever have a question about something on campus, we'll be able to answer that for you through the text line. Um, so these are a few things that I want to start with. Uh, what's the biggest difference between high school and college? Anybody? There a difference? Yes, that's a good answer. Yes, there is a difference. But what is that difference? You didn't have to study high school? Okay. Any other answers? <laughs> Anybody else? No other difference between high school and college. There's got to be some differences. Everybody gets in it. Why do you think they do? In high school or here? In high school, you have more people that get in your face. Right? That's true. Uh, anything else? So it's one word I'm looking for. It starts with a C. Anybody can think of it? No. Ends with an E. Chief. Uh, college is a choice. Sorry. High 
like you pretty much have to die. I mean, if you did, you, you could have not gone, but you probably would have gotten in trouble by your parents. College is a choice. You don't. You choose if you would like to be here because no one's going to, like you said, everybody get in your face. No one's going to go make you get out of your dorm room, go to class. No one's going to double check if you do all your homework. Um, your professors that actually make our life a whole lot easier if you don't do your homework, that's less you have to grade. So we're not necessarily going to complain about that necessarily. But that's a huge difference because you went to high school probably because your parents made you or you might have wanted to be there, but it's mandated pretty much that you graduate from high school. You don't have to attend college. Uh, so then uh, also, you said everybody in your case, your parents are not necessarily here. Even if, do you live on campus? You're going to pick on you live in front of them. You both, no, you guys live, you still live at home? Right. Um, well, for commuter students, typically they might go on your face a little bit because you're still at home. But if you were to live on campus, then you will get away from them. But typically, parents will treat you as an adult because you're out of the house, you're growing up, and so you will hopefully act like. And sometimes we feel like, it makes me feel old, I tested this out on my students, and my graduate students in my office and my two workers, and they didn't remember the song, parents just don't understand by Will Smith. I was like, oh my God, yes, that's like, y'all did like that? Okay, you got me, you did it? They didn't know, it made me feel bad. But anyway, sometimes you feel like parents don't understand as you're going through different things and adjusting. So there's this there's this, this thing as a helicopter parent versus a submarine parent. Oh, do you have you have children? Okay. Do you know what a helicopter parent is? No. Okay. Do you, does anybody know what a helicopter parent? Anybody in the back? My mom. Your mom? Why do you call your mom a helicopter parent? Because um, if I was to come to school and she calls me so many times and I do not answer, campus police will be in my classroom. <laughs> one way or, or another. And she's done it to me and my brother. She sends the police looking yeah. for you. So you just ignore your mama calls for no reason. No, she calls really early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yes, a helicopter parent is typically someone who hovers, who's sending campus police to find their students when they are in class or sleeping or the phone might be off, or they're double checking, you know, did you wake up, they call and do wake up calls in the morning, they remind them when they have tests, and all. I mean, this is kind of a nice thing when you get to be an adult, you're like, oh, this is about to remind me to do that stuff. Um, they're just on top of everything, they do a lot, they fill out a lot of their paperwork um, for them as far as entering into college, et cetera, et cetera. Submarine parent, typically, they do a lot of those things, but they do it kind of on the radar, like under, on the low. They, you know, they might remind you every now and then, but they won't send the police to come find you. Um, they, they might you know, ask you how things are going, but they don't necessarily do it all the time. So there's two different types. But you know, a lot of times, you're trying to find your independence, and you're trying to just transition into college and figure out your way. Like You may not even know anybody. You may not have any friends. You may not really know what you're supposed to be doing. So it could be a good thing or a bad thing. So a lot of parents know their students, and they know what they need and what they don't. Um, identify your major. Did you know you wanted to be a psychology major when you came here? I had options. You had other options, okay. Uh, did you know you wanted to be an HHP major when you got here? Yes, yes. Did you know you wanted to be a physical therapist? It was actually with the three times that the first semester. It was with the three, okay, your first semester. Did you know you wanted to be a business major? No, when you got here, okay. Is there a such thing as a perfect major? Anybody? To some people? Is, is there, really, anybody? Is there a perfect major? No? Uh, you're, why, do you, you, why do you want to be a psychologist? Other people's problems. You like solving other people's problems. Okay. You like talking to crazy people? Yes. Is that what is that what it is? I don't, I don't, I don't really know. Um, you know, I, I use myself as an example. When I went to college, I wanted to be a business major. And everybody said, like, why do you want to be a business major? I said, because I want to wear heels and cute dresses. <laughs> Clearly not a business major, but I can still do that. Had no purpose. That was not a real reason why I you wanted to wear dresses and heels too? Yes. That's what I thought. Uh, there was no real reason. I had no reason. I, I, I looked at them as part, you know, they were in control, they looked professional, they knew how to dress, but I didn't really know what business majors did. Uh, my eighth grade gym teacher uh, taught our communications class and told me that I probably should major in communications because I did, uh, I did pretty well with it. When my college, when you came, you had to pick two majors. So you had a major, you kind of had like a sub major, just in case you changed your mind. So I chose communications because my eighth grade gym teacher. Once again, I didn't really have a reason to choose communications because I just did it because someone else told me that that's what I should major in. Um, because I registered late 
and I did not attend the welcome that I was supposed to attend. Uh, the vision classes were full, so I had to take intro to commerce, intro to communication, and I fell in love with it. Never would have thought, so I ended up switching my major, I never even took my business classes, and it just worked out for me that way, because my eighth grade gym teacher told me that that's what I should do, so obviously he knew something more than I did. But I got ready to get my master's, and what do I, what do you guys think I majored in? Home study. Home study? Home study. Business. Medicine and business. So even though I went full circle and I got my MBA, I, the reason why I majored in business is because I was a public relations major and marketing was a great offset for that. So it really works well. So I ended up actually going back to the major that I started it with, but now I had purpose for the reason why, even though I, I work in education, so that's beside the point. But ideally, I was going to work for a nonprofit agency, do marketing, maybe St. Jude's, that whole deal. So I had a plan and it adjusted, but at least I had a purpose. So the reason why I say that about a major, there's not really a perfect major. You can have several different talents. You can have a lot of different interests, and it may fit more than one area, so there, not, there may not be a perfect major for you. You may have to sample out a couple of different things. Um, and so that's what my department kind of helps you do, to decide why you want to major and what you want to major in and help you figure out what those choices are. Um, so this is also what we talk about. An academic year consists of summer, fall, and spring. It's very important when it comes to your financial aid, which we'll get to a little bit later. Um, the re and the reason why we start with summer, fall, and spring, because that's the order that your financial aid is processed in. But those are the three semesters from which you can take courses here. Uh, you can have a face-to-face -face class, you can have a web class or a hybrid class, or you can have a completely web-based class, which is completely online. So those are our three types of courses. And then you have three credit hours, typically, except for our AP 7000 autonomy credit one, one credit hour. So uh, does everybody know the golden rule about studying and credit hours? How much are you supposed to study? For equal amount. Huh? Equal amount of each. Equal amount? Compared. Is it that? Well, one, uh, one course hour would equal one hour of studying. Yeah, so if you, one, you're supposed to study one hour for every credit hour. So that's basically, if you're taking 12 hours, 12 times three credit hours, how many hours? 36. 36, that's why you got business, maybe you can do math. You're smart. 36 hours, do you guys study 36 hours? No. I, yeah, I didn't study 36 hours. You, and you would be very, very smart if you did that. 36, that's study, that's not homework time, that's not review, that, you know, that's actual study. So it says that you can be successful, that's what the stats say, I haven't actually proven it wrong. But uh, we also really encourage you to see your academic advisor because these are some of the times where you can discuss your successes, your failures, um, your academic progress, what courses you should take each semester, which order you should take them if there's a prerequisite, um, your career goals, um, you can explore different majors, possibly internships, understand the university's policies and why you take the course and when you take it and the order you take it. So they're supposed to help you with this process. So in AP 3000, you were supposed to really stress seeing your advisor discussing these things each semester. That's why we require that you have to see them before we let you go ahead and move on. Uh, the next topic we're talking about is being uh, basically real with yourself, real versus fantasy. A lot of times you said you didn't really have to study in college. I was that student. Um, I thought studying was looking over my notes the night before a test. That's what you did. Is you just look, look over notes, and you know if I read my notes for an hour, oh, that study so long. That was just oh, I studied real, real hard that time. So that's what my study habits consist of when I was in high school, and I did fairly well in high school without even really having to study, without even really trying. So when I came to college, that was a huge awakening that I actually had to, just looking over my notes was not making me have A's all the time. That's not really um, how I thought life was supposed to be. And I felt like I was really smart. I graduated with high GPA, it was just gonna come easy to me. That's not necessarily going to happen. And your study habits may change as you progress, especially when you get to the junior and senior year, you get into your major, um, it should be easier because you should have an interest and you should like what you're doing, um, but you still have to concentrate a little bit more um, and study for different tests, different ways, to, depending on what class you're taking. Um, so you have to study smart. Uh, you can't just look over the stuff the day before, 10 minutes before the class. Avoid too many back-to-back -back classes. I know when I help students with advising at Welcome, I try to tell them don't do more than two classes back-to-back. Uh, because for once you need a break. If you're just sitting there listening to somebody talk, 
um, you, you start to just tune out and you're not really paying attention. Plus, you may need a snack, you want to study in the middle, you may have class or do work or work study or something like that. So more than two classes back to back is not really helpful. Also because if you want to get to class early or maybe talk to your instructor, you don't have that time if you're going from one end of campus to the other. So that's why we talk about arriving early. Um, it's good to use an academic planner, which they're free, because uh, that helps you with your time. I know I didn't live without my academic planner because I was involved in a lot of on-campus events, I had a lot of study time, I worked, um, I was a tutor, so I had a lot of stuff going on, so I lived by my planner to kind of keep you in line, because you're not going to remember everything that you have. Um, use the hour in between when you do have a break. That's time for you to study. A lot of times, students don't do that, but if you look over your notes more often, then you won't have to study as hard or study for as many hours at night time, that gives you more free time where you can, you know, go to school or do whatever you can do. Um, so you won't really have to do that. As well as combined tasks. Uh, a lot of times, uh, professors may post their lectures and different things online. So you can combine tasks, like if you work out, you can download it to your iPod and listen to your notes, put it played in the car while you're, you know, while you're exercising, you know, while you're doing boot camp with me. Um, or, you know, if you have another project that you're working on, you can get a study buddy and go ahead and talk about two classes at once or whatever you need to do. So it's just ways to make, studying smart is ways to make your process a little bit easier. Um, and then also studying according to your body clock. I'm a morning person. So if you ask me, I'm not a night owl. I was not a typical college student. So I didn't like to stay up to 1 o'clock in the morning because I'm not going to comprehend anything that I'm studying at 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning. I would rather go to bed at 9 o'clock or 8, sometimes because I'm really lame, and get up at five in the morning and study because I'm more alert. But that's my body clock. I just I can get up and I can do that, and it's I'm going to comprehend everything I study versus if I'm studying something at ten o'clock at night. And then I just study to my learning style. Uh, did they write, did everybody take a learning style inventory in high school or AP two thousand? Ran another type of learning style before I got to mine. No, you not know. Okay, does anybody know the learning style? Nobody. Else. What's your learning? Kinesthetic. Kinesthetic, right. Anybody else different? That's very popular, that's what I am. Auditory. Anybody else, anything else? No? Okay. Yeah. Uh, before we get to that, I want to talk about different uh, academic support services. Uh, has any of you, have any of you used the writing lab? Where is the writing lab? Library. In a library, okay. So you, but you haven't used it, but you know where it is, so that's good, that's one step. Have you used the online writing lab? No. So has anybody used the online writing lab? I mean, I know, boy, she has in the back. I know my, my students did. It's really cool. I think it's just writing lab at apsu.edu. But you can email your papers to them, and they will make corrections or adjustments and send them back to within 24 hours. There is no excuse for you not to have all A's in all your papers, because that's the easiest tool that we have, as well as you can actually physically go to the library and utilize the writing lab. Uh, but usually, our academic support services are all in marks. And they're in, I think, one one twenty four to be exact. But they do one on one or group two three. Uh, they also do technology workshops. Does everybody use Prezi? Does anybody know how to use Prezi? Does anybody know what Prezi is? No. Okay, Prezi is actually what I'm using right now. It's an online PowerPoint system. Um, so I can show you a little bit about it. I actually do those workshops for the um, academic support office. Uh, we had two of them last semester. So it's just basically, instead of having a PowerPoint download on your computer, you can just use it online, and it's free for students, so that's kind of cool. But they have all kinds of technology workshops. So if you don't know how to use the latest version of Microsoft Word or Excel or whatever new project is out or new technology, they will probably show you how to use it, hopefully, and find someone if they don't know how to use it. Um, so the right now they do math quite often, um, and you can request subjects um, if they don't offer something. Um, if, like, if you needed a psychology, we were looking for a psychology tutor, we can find one for you, and then we utilize it in the office. So if there's any class that we don't have on a regular basis, that's not a reason for you not to go there, because they could probably find you like, nine times out of ten. Okay, so let's talk about learning stuff. Um, I don't want to speak learning stuff. What else are going to talk about? So kinesthetic. What is a kinesthetic learner, since you're a kinesthetic learner? A person who learns by using their hands. Yeah. Can you tell? I'll talk with my hands up. Kinesthetic learner. There's a person who learns by using their hands, so they do movement. So if you physically act out or do like math, typical, typically kinesthetic learners um, like to physically do what they learn. And it, the pamphlet I passed out, and there's some more if you just walked in, um, it talks about learners in this pamphlet and how you typically like to learn. 
like our kids said, they usually use flashcards or they have labs or they do group projects and things like that. Off those, so the other type of learner is a visual learner. Is anybody else a visual learner? Right in the back. So visual learners, they like to read and do outlines um, a lot of times. So they can just look at something and they pick it up. I'm definitely not that type of learner. And the last one is an auditory learner. Um, they prefer podcasts, lectures, group discussions. So uh, when you have a lecture in class and your teacher just stands up and tells you all these things, you don't even have to take any notes. You're just going to soak it all in. And you remember that you just got it. So how are you going to study? Don't press play on yeah, your memory. It's all up there. It's all up there. there you go. You're going to be straight at yourself. Be sure to check your GPA. <laughs> um, so another thing we like to tell students is to take initiative. Um, because we provide all these resources and all these things, just like this workshop. You need all these things are things you need to know. We send it out to 2,000 students. And it's how many of you get. So, not saying my workshop is the best workshop in the world. But students don't utilize some of the things that we offer. Um, I know the African American Cultural Center has worked. They had one earlier today on financial literacy. Financial literacy. Okay, and how many students took advantage of that? Three. Three students. Financial literacy. It's time for what? Your FAFSA? Does everybody know what FAFSA is? Yes. Okay, you should. That means free money. So, you know, it's time for FAFSA, student loans, scholarship things are coming up. So sometimes you have to take initiative and look for different events for you to go to that are help. So. Um, in addition, we have a lot of campus resources, um, organizations, financial aid is what we're going to talk about, things on campus for you. Um, one thing is the Office of Undergraduate Research. I think this is an asset here at Austin P. We put a lot of money and resources into doing undergraduate research. A lot of times, um, those assets are put towards graduate work. So the fact that we're putting money into allowing students to do research at an undergraduate level um, is really key here at Austin Peay. So there's a lot of different departments that really focus on things. I know the Art and Allied Health and Military Science um, has a project, um, as well as Humanity, so that would be HHP, so if that works for you. So a lot of times they have research assistance with different departments if you have something in the sciences, so if you're interested, you could possibly be published for what you do, and that would definitely be significant if you're looking to be published. Um, for your work, and so the fact that the institution is putting money and resources into you for doing this, I think this is something that you should take advantage of, depending on what your major is. A lot of, especially if it's something towards the sciences, because that will definitely benefit you, because you'll probably have to be published anyway. Uh, we have a lot of honor societies and organizations. If you're a freshman, if you have a 3.5, you can be an Alpha Lambda Delta. Um, if you're a transfer student, we have Top Sigma, and Alpha Sigma Lambda is for non-traditional students. But there are Gamma Beta Phi, there's a lot of other honor societies. Um, being a part of these honor societies will help you for one, it's a resume builder because um, different jobs and places of employment want to know that besides you going to class, that you were connected a lot of these places to community service and teach you other valuable assets, asset skills for you to learn. So that's good for you to be a part of on campus. Um, we already talked about different types of learning. So one thing I didn't talk about is instructional style. Um, so what is a lecture? I'm going to pick on you because you just walked in. What's your name? Bubba. Bubba? Okay, Robert, we don't know what that. I you call you Rob. Okay. What what's a lecture? Perfect. Okay, that's your favorite style of class teaching? You hate lectures. What is your favorite style? Mm -hmm. You like uh, engagement or discussion based classes? Did you have to take AP Smith Yes, I'm in that. You're in that now. Is your instructor, I don't know, I tell me who your instructor is, but does your instructor do a lecture or do they do a discussion based course? Well, the uh, first day is just like, just to get people to know each other, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, what did you do? Well, I'm in my class. Oh, okay. We'll come back and tell you. Uh, so discussion based, typically AP 2000 is either a combination or it's a discussion based course. Because um, it's the whole point of the course is to have students engage and let them know what resources we offer and what we do. And then the third type is cooperative, which is a combination of both. There are times where I need to just stand here and do a lecture because I need you to take notes and give you information because you need to write it down. Uh, because I may miss something, so that's why a lecture works. So depending on what you're, on what you're doing, but it's good for you to learn what you, how you learn best by knowing what type of learner you are 
um, and what style the course is. Because typically when you look on the course uh, catalog or when you register for classes, it may say if it's a lecture or if it's a student or a discussion-based type course. So if you're looking for that, that could be listed on there and that may be something that you will look for. Um, the last thing, or not the last thing, one of the things we want you to do is to connect. Connect to other students, connect to organizational clubs like we talked about or honor societies, possibly studying abroad, internships, building relationships and networks. Uh, why do we want you to get involved on campus? Why do we want you to get involved? Why do we care if you have friends? It makes you get more experience. It makes you enjoyable. It makes you be well-rounded. That's really key. We do want you to be well-rounded. Why do we not want someone just stay in the room all the time and study? We'd be really, really smart. That's what we want, right? Get all right. More than likely being smart. <laughs> this is true. Yes, all of those things are correct. Um, for one thing, uh, when you're looking for employment or hiring people, they want a well-rounded person. Um, anyone can just study all the time and know their resources. But we want someone that can build relationships. A lot of things about jobs is building relationships. Y'all, most of the time, depending on what you do, you have to work with other people. Um, so learning those skills, uh, learning how to talk, to people, learning what, what you like and what you're good at, because you may not know that. You know, if I wasn't exposed to a lot of things in my job, um, I wouldn't know how to give workshops to stand in front of talk to groups, because I had to do it, practice in class. Um, so these are a few organizations I'm completely being biased, because these are the ones that are within my department. Um, so in your AP 3000 class, you have a peer mentor, and so they're employed by me. So they're paid via scholarships. They actually get paid for sitting in your class and talking to you and giving you the resources that they need. Um, in the summertime, when you came to welcome, we had ROAs, which are registration orientation assistance. So they help out throughout the summer to uh, take you to figure out where your classes are, um, and then they're paid to do that as well. So these are one of many. The Student Affairs Division um, hires over 200 students a semester just to work on campus in various offices, just in that one division alone. So there's always jobs, there's jobs that, that come up now. A lot of them start in the fall and carry over, but sometimes we have new, I just hired new for the spring because I had people to graduate. So there's certain departments where you can work actually in their office, or like my ROAs only work at certain times throughout the year. This event it was actually, I paid them to come out at midnight and do the PK breakfast, and the president made them pancakes and talk to students. I paid you to go eat pancakes and hang out with the president and talk to students. That's what I paid them to do. So they were eating, and they were at the PK breakfast. So that was ROAs and career mentors. But like I said, there's a lot of different things you can do. One thing is studying abroad. A lot, of, a lot of times it costs extra money, but you can go anywhere. I think there's a trip to, that I just saw on the bus today. I don't even remember where they're going. Argentina. Huh? Argentina. Argentina, yeah, they're, they're always going somewhere um, on different breaks. And so studying abroad, sometimes you can get credit for it, or we have exchange programs. I know we have an international, international section of AP 2000 because we have students that came over from different countries and stayed here for a semester or a year. Um, so there are scholarships associated with it, but a lot of times you have to pay a little bit extra out of your pocket if you get a refund or something. But it's a great experience to go to another country and really learn something and how they just produce education or how they just work with other people. So that's a great experience as well because not everybody will be able to leave the country. I know my peer mentor went to London, I think they went to over the break. Uh, so he came back to the room. Um, another event that we offer here through the, it's a partnership between the Career Services Office and the Alumni Office is a career networking event. So obviously we have free students. It's coming up, it's on the 20th from 9 to 1, it's in the UC. This is key because it's alumni that uh, work at different companies or corporations. They're coming back to give back. And so what they're going to be doing is if you can bring, you know, your resume or just if you're interested in that field, they'll talk to you about that. They aren't going to be necessarily doing job placement. But they're giving you the experience and what benefited them at Austin P to get them to where they are. So it's a wide range of different companies and employers and different people that are all alumni of Austin P. So they're, you know, possibly, that's why I would say have your resume ready, um, maybe offered a job, but that's not the sole purpose of why they're coming back. They just want to give back and talk to students and so let them know what was um, utilized and what they looked at when they were applying for jobs or internships. Um, financial aid. Uh, what are some of the key differences be between financial aid and scholarships that are not on here? You have to pay back. You have to pay back. You have to pay back scholarship? No, financial aid. 
Six thousand for tuition. Okay, you know, a little under six thousand. So, what does that mean? If you only can get twenty five hundred, you don't have to pay. Do some stuff with student loan or something. Scholarship hopefully will pick it up. Um, renewal eligibility is, is measured by twenty four attempted hours. So, once you pass twenty four hours, um, then you can potentially renew. The one thing while we stress to you about taking thirteen hours, I know if you're a freshman and being on track. Um, is because a lot of things are based on how many hours you have attempted and or completed. So if you did the minimum of 12 hours each semester, that will get you to 24 hours. However, if you do that throughout your college career, you will not graduate in four years. You will automatically be in a five-year program just for one semester, just taking that, those amount of hours. Now you can make up from semester to semester. So I try to tell my students, depending on what their major is, to at least take 15 hours because that will put you on track to graduating within four years. The problem with that is, if one semester you, do, you don't do so hot, let's say in math, and you drop that math class, it's gonna automatically put you down to those 12 hours, which will still be full time. So that will keep you on track for getting your money. But then in the summer or another semester, you may be able to pick that class back up. And so it depends on what works for you. But if you, your goal is to be out in four years, you need to at least be taking 15 hours. Now we don't count Summer, so you can always take a summer class and that will kind of make up for those hours. But if you, I never went to summer school. That was just what I didn't want to, I didn't want to waste my summers doing that because I needed to work. So I, I took 15 to 18 and one semester I took 21 hours. Don't, I don't suggest doing that. It's, it's very stressed out. But that's what I needed to do to make sure I graduated on time. And so I just didn't want to take summer classes. Um, we also award you based on certain GPAs. So there's like benchmarks. So basically we let you have a lower GPA your freshman year because you're just getting started. But by the time you get to be between sophomore 24 hours, that's still freshman, but sophomore to junior year, we want you to be at a 2.75. So you should gradually be getting towards your major and be doing better. Um, when you get to 72, 96, or 120 hours, you should at least have a 3.0 GPA. Uh, but it doesn't mean if you don't have the 3.0 GPA that you can't get financial aid. But these are some things that they would like for you to be at. It's just benchmarks. Um, students must not change enrollment status after census day. Does anybody know what census day is? No one, I didn't know that when I went to college. No one, anybody know? No. It's the day where they take all the census for the state. It's census for the state. It's pretty much, it's, I call it the 14th class day. We give you about two weeks until the semester to figure out do I want to do this college day. And then those are the official numbers that the university reports to uh, the Board of Regents. So those are our census dates. Because you can change and say, hey, I want to take English instead of this history or whatever you take. So um, that's why that's really critical. So if you change that, 
Because you can come to school, apply for financial aid, and get all your money and just drop out. We don't want you to do that. So we want you to use it towards school. So you have to stay in at least until then. Um, some scholarships, does everybody have the HOPE scholarship or have heard of it at least? Because that's a very popular one. You get $4,000. I did not have, I didn't have any HOPE in Illinois, so I'm really sad about this. Um, have to have a 3.0 or 21 year ACT. And then there's a supplemental to HOPE you can get in addition to. A merit, uh, if you have a 3.75 and a 29 or your ACT, you can get the Aspire, that's a $1,500 um, if you wanted to do that scholarship. Uh, a couple of my students have both of those, so they got HOPE plus the Aspire, so they got uh, 5500 in scholarships that they split for the year. Um, they have a non-traditional student scholarship, so that's a student that has to be 25 years of age or older, never enrolled or never enrolled for at least two years uh, after college, post-secondary. Um, and they also have an income where they have to make less than $36,000 adjustable gross income. Um, and they have to be between 12 and 24 hours. And then there's one for uh, veterans that's called Helping Heroes, it's a thousand dollar scholarship. So those are some that we offer. We also have a dean scholarship. Uh, then I pay for if you decide to be a peer mentor and are awarded, I pay scholarship for that job per semester. Um, there's also a scholarship if you are a certain level of SGA uh, for like our SGA presidents or our SGA vice president, they are awarded a certain scholarship. So there's other ways for you to get scholarship money that's a lot of times it's tied to GPA, so that's the big thing. If your scholarship, then you to tie to GPA or ACT. Um, and usually 3.0 is that threshold, but it just depends on each scholarship. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, a lot of other things we have on campus, there are a lot of discounts. I didn't know this until I started doing research for this workshop. Um, all these restaurants, we get like Chick-fil-A, you get discounts at, Blondie's, Shoney's, um, what else is called, Backyard Burger, I don't even know where that's at. Uh, the Sweetest Batch, all these other places around campus. So if you just show your ID, if you go to a lot of restaurants, you get off, we got off on the pizza over there. Y'all make sure I get the pizza. You have to discount off on that. So, um, the last thing we want you to do is transform. So we're going to talk a little bit about career services. Uh, do you, all of you have a resume? Do you yes. have a resume? You might have one. A few people do. Um, as a freshman, when you start out, uh, you probably don't have a resume just because it's your first year trying to build experience, but that's why we tell you to get involved because they put something on your resume. This, unfortunately, shameful thing was my cover letter I applied to when I was in, I think, my sophomore year. Did I say that? Did I say sophomore? Okay. I think so. To, I, wanted, I was a PR major and I wanted to do an internship. And in the communications department, you had to do an internship. And I wanted to intern at Murder, Inc. Records, unfortunately. And so um, this is, is what I wrote. You know, I'm seeking an internship at Murder, Inc. Records. Um, I'm a qualified candidate for this internship. I attached my resume. I switched the school to off the peak. Uh, majoring in PR. I told them I'm a hard worker. I've been a lot of campus organizations. I'm, a, I'm an honor society, Gamma Bay Five. Did my campus board activities. I was in public relations, student society of America. Uh, I've done all these things. I can coordinate events on and off campus. I'm really enthusiastic, reliable, devoted. Um, I have charm, and then it's messed up that is needed to accomplish all these tasks. I didn't even talk right. I'm very interested in this prestigious company. Is Murder Inc. Records prestigious? No. Okay, no, it's not. But, you know, I said that because that sounded nice. Um, <laughs> clearly, I did not get the internship because they were like, who is this crazy girl? I think she's going to work as well. Uh, but the reason why I show this as an example is because what I wrote didn't really match the company that I was applying to. Now, I'm not trying to say I was supposed to be like, oh, I bust a cat and somebody, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I was supposed to write. But that was probably, I probably would have gotten it if I had said that. But it really didn't work out. And I was really just looking at the, the job title. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased that I did not get that internship because I had a very awesome internship at Tyson Foods. At first, I really thought, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be working with chicken and I don't even like animals and no, I don't want to. But I uh, actually didn't do that at all. Um, I traveled around in private planes with John Tyson, the owner of the company. Um, we did nonprofit work, which is why I went in to get my MBA. Um, and we partnered with um, a few players from the Miami Heat, so I got to meet the whole basketball team, and we did a lot of marketing, and, and we donated 50,000 pounds of food to homeless shelters, and we did a lot of things that were really great, that really molded me to make, me make the decisions of what I made as far as 
what did I want it to do for my master's and what I wanted to do with my career. So um, I don't know what road I would have been on if I hadn't worked at Burger Eats Records. Um, but at the time, that's what I thought I wanted to do. Um, so here's a, <laughs> which I wrote, yeah. here's a, a sample of, of a resume for a student just starting out. Um, and this format will be available if you guys want it as well. This is a very simple format for students to use. You can put your education. You typically don't put your GPA on your resume unless you have a really high GPA. Um, if you don't have anything above a 3.0, then I wouldn't put it on there. Or you can just not put it on there at all, and so then you won't have any questions. Um, and then you put your qualifications if you're really good with technology or Word or Excel or PowerPoint or anything, any, anything that will be applicable to the job that you're applying to, you might want to list that. Um, any experience, if you notice on here, um, for this student, they have peer mentor experience and they've been a tutor. Um, and then they also worked at Old Navy. So what they also want to talk about is this chronological order. So you want to make sure that you put what you're doing current and, to, and you work backwards. So you don't want to list more than at least probably three jobs depending on what you have. Um, and you don't want it to be longer than a page because you don't have that much experience. And then at the bottom it has the activities, the Art Society, and they were Biology and Math Club. So you may not have three jobs. You may be in more organizations at the beginning than uh, actual work experience, and that's okay. And so the Career Services Office will help you develop your resume and talk about your experience and how that should, uh, how that should go. They also have a uh, system called Jobs for Gov, where you can, once you do get your resume created, you can post it on there, and then they have jobs all the time that are looking, and they'll call and say, okay, well, I'm interested in this student that's posted. Um, and this is really key for companies that are even outside of Clarksville or even in, within the area. And so they have a jobs book. You can come into the office, which is in the UC, and they can list all the jobs that they have locally, typically. But this online is really key, because that's the way that we're going. You're looking for jobs online. You apply for a lot of jobs online. So we have this system that is for you. That's only for Austin Key students. So if you are a student, then you can't um, utilize a lot of things that they have. Um, my office is here to help celebrate the victories and support your academic challenges. So overall, here's all our numbers and everything. For your, uh, there's some extra pamphlets up here as well. There's a book uh, that I have, How to Get Good Grades in College, and it talks a little bit more in depth in any of the things that I talked about. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Besides how many pieces left? No? Anything? Yes. Where is this posted? Yeah. This workshop? Yeah. Or where is what posted? That information is uh, It's on Prezi. P-R-E-Z-I.com. That's one thing, another thing about Prezi. Um, you can just go on the website and you can type in my name and anything that I've ever, any workshop or any PowerPoint I've ever done is public knowledge is on there. So my name is Ashley Spearman. If you just type in my name, you can have everything on there. It's online. P-R-E-Z-I. Now you can't change it or copy it, but you can look at it. It's a really, it's really cool. It's like a, PowerPoint on steroids. So it's like a really blank slate. And then you just okay. If you don't have any other questions, that's it. Please complete the evaluation. Does that does everybody have one? Before Stephanie kills us. He doesn't have one, Stephanie. Make sure everybody gets one before you leave. Uh, and grab more pizza if you want. We have a lot of food this month. And if you didn't sign in, we'd also like you to sign in so you get a calendar for you too. Thank you.